Hello guys, so today we are going to learn on subtopic 9.3 absorption and I hope you are ready to take your notes and let's begin. Before we move on, let as usual we have to look into the learning standard. So for today, we, our learning standard is 9.3.1 where you have to identify the structure of a velus in the ileum and 9.3.2 where you have to be able to communicate about the adaptations of ileum and velus in the absorption of digested food. Okay, let's recap our previous lesson. So from our previous lesson, you know there are two types of digestion, the physical and the chemical digestion. Okay, both begin in the mouth and end in the small intestines which converts carbohydrate into monosaccharides or we call it simple sugar uh, which are glucose, fructose, galactose remember glucose, fructose, galactose they are simple sugar protein is converted into amino acids and lipid is converted into glycerol and fatty acids so these are very important because these products of digestion are going to be absorbed okay, in the small intestine and how that is what we are going to learn today okay we are not going to look into fibers vitamins and minerals because they do not uh, they are not being digested uh, fibers are not being digested but the vitamins minerals and water molecules are very simple so they can just be absorbed by the body and it does not require any digestion okay so we are going to look into the, di the, the absorption of the products of digestion Okay, uh, I'll, I'll repeat again. So from previous lesson, you know that the products of digestion of protein, fats and starch are broken down into amino acid, fatty acid and glycerol and also glucose respectively. Glucose, fructose and galactose, huh? simple sugar. So what will happen to these soluble nutrients? How are they made available to all body cells? Okay, now. These simple molecules produced from the digested food are absorbed in the ileum of the small intestine. So ileum is the end part of the small intestine right before the large intestine. As you can see in the picture here, okay, the one that is colored in a darker brown. Eh? So this is the ileum. Okay, so um, the absorbed nutrients will pass from the lumen of the small intestine into the bloodstream. Okay. Okay, now let's see the adaptations of ileum and uh, villus in the absorption of digested food. Okay, the rate of absorption of nutrients from digested food depends on the number one total surface area of the small intestine, thickness of membrane between the nutrient and the blood capillary, and also the concentration gradient of nutrients moving across the wall of small intestine. Now, guess what's the adaptation of the small intestine? Well, it's all that. Okay, the small intestine has a large total surface area, which is approximately 200 meter per square which is as big as a tennis court. Yeah, wow. Now, it is very long, about 6 meters. Okay, the ileum is about 3 meters though. Um, its wall is folded into lumen and it's covered with tiny projection called villus. Okay, uh, villus is singular, villi is plural. Okay. Okay, let's look into the villus adaptation that increases the surface area for absorption of digested food. Now, the villus has three major parts, the epithelium, the blood capillaries and the lactea. The epithelial cells of the villus are very thin, that is about one cell thick, which increases the absorption process to the cell. There are also many tiny projections called the microvillus, as you can see in the picture over here. 
Okay, these are the microvillus, the tiny projection, okay, on the epithelial cell. Alright, so now this microvillus uh, helps to increase the total surface area for nutrient absorption. Alright, there is also a network of blood capillaries in each villus to transport nutrients from digested food into the blood circulatory system. Okay, in each villus, a lacteal can be found which functions to absorb nutrients such as lipid, uh, the fatty acid and glycerol, okay, into the lymphatic vessel. There are also goblet cells on the epithelial cell lining of the small intestine. Okay, the goblet cell is actually an epithelial cell but without the microvillus. As you can see in the picture, okay, the goblet cells here Okay, does not have the microvillus. Alright, so this uh, goblet cell actually secretes mucus to smoothen the movement and protect the wall of the small intestine from the content of lumen. Lastly, the intestinal gland secretes intestinal juices that have digestive enzymes. Now, when you do, do your uh, notes later on, try to draw the structure of the villus to get a clearer understanding of its structure and adaptation. It helps. Okay, the absorption of digested food occurs when digested food molecules in the lumen penetrate the villi epithelium and enters the blood capillary network and also the lymphatic vessel or we call it as lacteal. Now, uh, the water soluble nutrients such as amino acids, simple sugars, simple sugar like glucose, fructose and galactose, the vitamins B and C and also ions will be transported into the blood capillaries. Whereas, the insoluble nutrients such as fatty acid and glycerol and also the fat soluble vitamins vitamins, the added vitamins, A, D, E, K, they will be transported into the lacteal. Okay, the amino acid and the simple sugar such as glucose, galactose and fructose, which are water soluble, will move from the epithelial cell of the villi into the blood capillary network in the villi. Okay, amino acid, glucose and galactose in the lumen are absorbed into the epithelial cell by active transport and then into the blood capillary. Now, whereas the fructose, fructose, okay, another simple sugar, is absorbed through facilitated, facilitated diffusion. Now, what about water and vitamins? Water diffuses through osmosis from the lumen to the epithelial cells and then into the blood capillary. Water-soluble vitamins such as vitamin B and C diffuses through simple diffusion from the lumen to the epithelial cells and then into the capillaries. Okay, the larger molecules of vitamins, however, such as vitamin B12, they are absorbed by active transport into the epithelial cells and lastly again into the blood capillaries. So now, all the nutrients, the amino acid, the simple sugar, water and vitamins will be transported from the blood capillaries to the liver through the hepatic portal vein. So all these uh, nutrients will go into the liver. Now, what about the absorption in the lacteal? Okay. In the lacteal, we know that the absorption of fatty acid, glycerol and also the fat soluble vitamins takes place. Now, the fatty acid and glycerol will diffuse by simple diffusion from the lumen to the epithelial cells and then it will recombine to form lipid droplets. Okay, you can see the droplets there before diffusion into the lacteal of the villi. Okay. So, fat-soluble vitamins, on the other hand, the ADEK, will also diffuse into the epithelial cells and then into the lacteal together with the lipid droplet. Hmm. 
Hmm. Did you know that aspirin and alcohol can be absorbed directly into the bloodstream through the stomach lining? Well, yes. But most drugs are absorbed in the small intestine because of its large surface area for absorption. The membrane of the small intestine ball is more permeable than the membrane of the stomach. Now, the absorption of alcohol into the bloodstream can take place in the stomach, especially if there is food present. In the presence of food in the stomach, all food and alcohol is trapped for digestion before they can move into the small intestine. So this causes less alcohol to be absorbed. But in the case of empty stomach, the alcohol will move into the small intestine which has a larger surface area for fast absorption. Okay, so once you are done with all that, you need to answer the questions from formative practice 9.2 in page 152 from your textbook to test your understanding. That is the usual way we work, right? Okay, question number one, name the structures for the absorption of digested food. Number two, name the structure in the villus involved in transporting of the following nutrients, amino acids and also vitamin A and E. All right, number three, explain the adaptations of the small intestine to increase the surface area for absorption of nutrients. And lastly, explain how the following substances can be transported across plasma membrane. A. Glucose galactose amino acid and also B. Fatty acid and glycerol. So I hope you can answer all these questions when you go, once you go through the lesson. Okay, with that, I will end my video here. Thank you for watching and please don't forget to like and subscribe my channel. Bye-bye.